Transforming a living space into a dream home can be a daunting task, but it doesn't have to be difficult. For years, I've helped homeowners with simple, easy to achieve solutions. All it takes is seeing design challenges as an opportunity for creativity and innovation. Welcome to In The Room. Hi guys. So this week we reached out to you and asked for questions about projects that you're taking on. We got a lot of really great questions and this makes a lot of sense because we're all focused on our homes right now. So with that said, let's dive right in. What are some do's and don'ts for a simple yet modern renovation to a small home? Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear simple and modern, I hear money signs, dollar signs, ding, 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 racking right up. Why? Because modern details are actually very expensive to pull off. Anytime you stray too far from the standard construction method that's uh, available to you, uh, you start adding dollars to it. So um, my very first don't is to not stray too far from typical construction details. Instead, make sure that everything that you've designed modernly fits into the bones of the home using a lot of trim. Um, trim, if you notice, is all around us, right? Around doors, uh, where the walls meet the floor. These pieces of trim help disguise the relatively rough methods of construction that are typically used to uh, build a house. And oftentimes I see modern designs skewing away from using trim. You know, rightfully so, we've moved away from decoration for decoration's sake, but trim is more than that. It's um, a very important way of making surfaces meet and it helps keep budgets down if you keep a lot of trim in your life. Don't neglect all the lighting updates that you want for your life and have put off. Make sure that all the recessed cans in the ceiling work the way you want them to. If you're already opening up walls and ceilings and you're gonna need to sheetrock eventually, this is something that I think makes a lot of sense, is to reconsider all the lessons that you've learned about lighting living in the home where you live. Where do the dimmers go? Let's put up some dimmers. Are the recessed cans located in the right places so that when we're working at a surface, our shadow isn't being cast on that surface? If you see a lot of shadows as you're trying to work at the kitchen, for example, your cans are not positioned correctly. They were probably positioned in a straight line uh, right down the center of the walkway because they thought that's where the light works. But in fact, no, you want that recessed light, that can, right over where you're working or off to the side so that your shadow is not getting in the way of your work surface. Don't over clutter with furniture. Uh, this may not be a problem for all of you, but definitely for some of you, we tend to collect a lot of furniture. An opportunity for editing uh, raises itself when you're taking on a renovation project. Because in fact, rooms can have a lot of power with a one piece of furniture edit, um, if you can. Uh, a lot of times we are over sofa and over chaired and we don't let the spaces breathe. And on the flip side of that, do consider how you're gonna hang art and where it's gonna go. My dad is renovating and redesigning the whole house, but he has no idea where to start. Any suggestions? The best place to start is with a budget. A budget and a plan next to one another, going through every single room and getting as specific as you possibly can be. This is an incredibly helpful exercise. Even if budget is no concern, just make sure that you go and think through every single detail in every single room, create your spreadsheet, throw down some numbers, you can edit them later, but that starts to become a real roadmap for thinking of the project. Kitchens and bathrooms are some of the biggest projects we take on, so the best thing to do with them is to plan them out to the finest detail, to the best of your abilities. This helps you not only budget for it, but you need to make sure that all of those different details arrive at the home at the right time. Um, and some of these kitchen objects can have huge lead times. So start with the kitchens and bathrooms, plan them out to a T, and place those orders in early. A great way to work, especially on your own home, if you're gonna live in it, is to work with local artisans, especially for those details that make a house a home. Because what ends up happening is you feel a lot more connected to the process of renovation rather than it being a kind of budget-driven and 
uh, style imposed process, you get to involve people in your community and make more intimate decisions about the space that you're gonna end up living in. And finally, color picking. Obviously it's important, but it doesn't have to be difficult. Uh, the thing I like to say is that color selection is almost like a journey and it's an adventure. You're gonna find out things as you start testing colors in the spaces where they'll be seen. I highly recommend buying some samples of paint, sometimes even buying a gallon with the right finish and painting different areas of the room, different walls to see how the light bounces off of it. And also consider what the flooring surface is going to be eventually. Uh, you obviously know what the floor material is, but some rooms you already know which rug is gonna go in there. So if you have an idea of some of the final colors that are gonna end up in that room, definitely consider them along with the actual color on the wall. I'm getting a condo remodel for a new kitchen and three bathrooms. How do I know I'm getting a fair estimate? Any negotiating tips? When it comes to knowing if you got a fair estimate from a contractor for a kitchen or a bathroom plan, it's important to have such a specific idea of what you want that when you get multiple bids from multiple contractors, they really are apples to apples and they make sense vis-a-vis -vis one another. And that's also your best tool for negotiating any number that seems out of place in the bid that you ultimately go for. By being as specific and as detailed as you can be in the design of the kitchen, in the selection of the appliances and fixtures, um, everything down to the poles and the hinges. If you can be as specific as you can be at the beginning, then you start to have a very clear map of what the market rates are for what you're trying to do. And you can have legitimate conversations with the contractors to question certain numbers. When I say detailed, I mean the kitchen has to have both a plan and an elevation for all the walls. You need to show the widths of the cabinets and how they work with one another, both in elevation and section, so that the contractor has as much information as he can to give you a proper bid. And don't forget to do a lighting plan as well. Um, that said, I would leave it at that. Yes, you have some more control in terms of what you pay for what arrives to your home, but that includes the coordination of it getting to your home at the right time. Um, this is the dance of construction, is to make sure that the materials arrive without cluttering up the space you're working in at exactly the right time so the right trades who are already there can immediately put them in. Um, some homeowners decide to take that on themselves and there's a lot of savings there. All the time that the contractor would spend coordinating uh, materials arriving on site, now you're taking on. But it is a full-time job, so if you're prepared to do that, it's a good way to save money. Keep in mind, if you ever keep somebody waiting for something that they're supposed to install, but it's not arrived yet, those uh, wasted hours can quickly eat into any potential savings that you gained by taking on the work yourself. So something to keep in mind. How to start an outdoor veggie garden. Step number one for creating an outdoor veggie garden is to plan it out. Draw it out on some graph paper, make it to scale, have fun with it. You can really wrap your whole mind around the drawings it takes to build something nice. Raised planters not only help the visibility of this beautiful plot of land, but um, they help with the harvesting by not having to bend down as low. You can even have really high raised planters and consider just sort of having them right at hand level. Once you've built the infrastructure for your veggie garden, you're gonna need to decide which plants you want. And for me, the best veggies are the heirloom veggies and those you can find online. If you're looking for the fruits and veg that you can typically find at the grocery around you, um, your local plant center should have a wall of seeds available to you, but uh, go online, see what's out there. There's beautiful, unique um, heirloom strains of common vegetables and plants that I think is a lot of fun and cre can create a sort of visual spectacle as much as a delicious one for you. You're gonna need some tools. You need a trowel to dig some holes. You need a stirrup hoe to weed, and you might need a little rake to level your soil and pull out any rocks. Um, and once you've got these three tools, you're pretty much ready to go. Um, the seed packets that you purchase will also tell you when to plant the seeds. Um, some seeds like to be planted early in the spring. Some you can plant all the way till the end of fall. Um, and make sure that you've planned this out accordingly so that you can use the sun exposure wherever your garden's gonna be to its 
uh, highest advantage. If you live in an area with frost, look for cool weather loving plants and plant them in the few weeks before it gets really chilly to give them half a chance. But you can really lean into the different seasons in your area um, and see what you can create for your veggie garden. And that's the last question. I hope that was fun. I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, I'm looking forward to more of your problem spaces and seeing how I can help you with unique solutions. See you next time on In The Room. If you've got a home makeover project you need help with or a room you'd like to reimagine, drop us a DM at shelter on Instagram and tell us your story. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube so you don't miss a new episode.